I'm going to introduce uh, Kirsten, who's here from Kara Weiss's beautiful line over here. Um, she's really a trailblazer in the community. I mentioned that green beauty has really come a long way in recent years. You know, previously people really associated it with the health food store and not having much pigmentation or not having the right consistency. And she's produced a really beautiful line that's luxurious, has sustainable, refillable packaging, and performs on a high end and a professional level. Um, and she's really accomplished herself as a makeup artist in the industry. So it's really something that's made for people like us who are looking for something that really speaks to us um, performance and consistency wise and um, all the color selection and even, you know, I found my perfect red, which I never thought I would have in a natural option, you know, and it comes from her line. So we're gonna have Kirsten doing a demo for you today using her products. Um, and our model is the beautiful Tiffany, who's here as well. So I'd like to introduce you to um, Kirsten from Care Weiss. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so it's, it's all thank you <laughs> very much. I'm equally going to say thank you so much for showing up on a rainy night um, to come out and, and hearing about, you know, green beauty. And obviously, I'm going to speak about my line, but um, I'm very excited to be here. And um, I think what I will just do is just tell a little bit about myself, you know, like how the story, uh, what the story is sort of behind the line and how it came about and then we'll go into you know sort of showcasing how it works. Um, I am originally from Denmark. Uh, I've lived in New York City the past 20 years and I moved you know over there because I wanted to try and pursue a career as a makeup artist. Um, I had gone to a school in Paris called Christian Chauveau which is um, basically you know like the the school that started Makeup Forever or the owner started the school, vice versa. Um, and I had not really been interested in makeup per se. I grew up on a farm. I was just like this nature kid and thought I was gonna get into architecture and how it sort of turned out is like I ended up at this school and really loved it and uh, makeup became my path. And then I've been working in the field, you know, like mostly in editorial work, uh, mostly print, but also commercials, music videos, you know, for like over 25 years. And um, what sort of sparked the, the line and the idea for that was really just, you know, as you know, you have your favorite kit, you have your favorite products, some from this brand, from th that brand, and just going, you know, out to jobs every day and constantly would have some of the girls pinpoint stuff that I would put out on my table saying, you know, I really can't tolerate the foundation from this brand. I, really break out from the mascara, do you have something else? Um, and just kind of realizing that it had this absurd normalcy to it, you know, like nobody really questioned if that's okay. Uh, you know, you buy something for $30, $40, you find out you're allergic to it, you put it aside, and that's considered normal. That's not normal, it shouldn't be normal. And at the same time, you know, I never really had any natural brands in my kit because they just didn't perform, you know, like the performance wasn't up to speed. Um, and so <clears throat> it was kind of this idea, you know, like there's truly like a gap in the market. If you could merge these two worlds and do it well, where you would have the performance be on par with the conventional brands, but you would have an ingredients list that didn't have any synthetics. And then you would just tie in the luxury aspect of the packaging, which to me was important as well. And you can kind of just cut out all compromises that seem to be attached to buying anything green. You would then all of a sudden maybe have a new sort of um, category almost that could be interesting. So that was my idea behind it. Um, I am not a formulator. So I started going to trade shows, um, you know, natural trade shows to try and find somebody that could support on the formulation part of things and uh, <coughs> teamed up with somebody in Italy that I still work with. Um, so it's a family run business. They've been in the green space uh, for 50 years and I do with them what you would call a private label. And it basically means that I will have an idea for a product I will sort of go to them and say, now, uh, you know, like I would love to do a cream blush, but I would love to include X, Y, and Z oils. You know, is that something you think could work? 
Um, and then they'll start formulating and be like, no, you can't mix this, really, this is not going to work. And, and so it's just a close partnership with them that's, uh, that is really amazing. Um, but it's more challenging, you know, working in naturals. It's literally like being in the wine industry. If you imagine that a raw material, you know, that comes from a harvest, let's say a shea butter in 2016 that we use in a lot of our products, and then the harvest that we get in 2017, the shea butter might have a lower fat content, which obviously is going to have an outcome effect on the final product, but it can't. So I can sort of give you an example, you know, like I had been working for a really long time on a cream blush. I'm obsessed with anything cream based. I think it's just beautiful. It gives that beautiful sort of dewy look. Um, but that's what you can always get with silicones. Silicone is this magical ingredient you can pop into anything and it's not oily, it's not dry, it's not greasy, it just has that perfect slip. So when you try, you want to try and replicate that perfect texture because women have gotten used to those textures. I remember myself, you know, like the school that I went to in Paris that was total old school, you know, and uh, it was just sort of like layer upon layer, you know, like concealer, foundation, heavy powder, blush powder, you know, and so you walked out of there and it was almost like, wow, you're in a theater play, you know, um, but that was cool. Uh, but then Francois Norris came along with his glow sticks and that, for me personally, was a massive eye-opener. I just remember thinking, wow, you can actually put glow on your skin and have it stay glowy. And so I sort of never looked back after that and, you know, have always been working with, with creamy textures. Um, so you'll see a lot of, you know, the ingredients and the products that are in the line, you know, like, will always come back to sort of that glowy finish. <coughs> Um, but just to go back, I just want to just tell a little bit about, you know, like the production cycle of something like this because it is a lot more complicated than working in synthetics. Synthetics, you know, you can always call up a factory and say, hey, I need another 10,000 pieces and it will always be the same because it's a synthetic. Now with, with working in naturals, um, you know, I had, going back to, you know, when I had been formulating, we had probably worked on the formulation for the cream blush for over a year. Um, and sort of the, the main ingredients are butters, oils, and waxes. Those are like, there's more ingredients in there, but those are like the, the key ingredients. Um, and I felt like we had the perfect texture. It, it was amazing. I was ecstatic about it and put three colors in production. And then I got production samples from these productions that I just paid a lot of money for. And when they came back, they were a lot drier. And I was like, that's not why I okayed, you know. And, but it really was because it turned out that the shea butter came from an harvest where the fat content was about 50% lower. So obviously that has a massive effect. And uh, the Italians, as much as I love them, were like, but, you know, Kirsten, that's just normal. In the natural world, we work with what's called an acceptable margin. So if you imagine a margin that's this wide, sometimes it's a little dry, Sometimes it's a little on the greasy end, but it's okay because we'll just speak to the sort of natural, beautiful ingredients and people will be okay with that because that will be the compromise you have to live with. And I think of all the things that I'm sort of the happiest with and the sort of, I would say almost like the proudest of, is taking this margin from here to here and that's where we work. We don't move out of here because it has to stay consistent. Otherwise you'll never get a, you know, like a customer who's used to conventionals to switch because, you know, if, if you fall in love with a red lipstick, it can't be slightly more brown next time you buy it. Um, so to this day, you know, when we produce new bulk, it just goes through so many hands, frankly, before it ends up on the shelf, you know, and so that's a major difference in the, the production cycles from synthetics and, and naturals. Um, <coughs> then everything you know, is uh, mineral based, you know, like all of the colors come from mineral, except a few of like the super poppy colors. Uh, they just, it can't be done. I, I swear to you, I've tried everything, you know, like rose petals. We could fill this entire room with rose petals, but it would only give a small amount of pigment. Um, so a couple of the colors have under 1% of artificial color. Other than that, the whole line is certified organic. And what that means is that 95% of what goes in there comes from supervised organic farming. So it's just, 
really high quality and, and just a real pure product. Um, in terms of the packaging, because I just want to mention that as well, you know, like packaging became a, a big part of it for me as well. You know, I wanted to have something that was sustainable, so you don't just buy something, throw it out, buy something, throw it out. But I had started working with a, a great designer friend of mine in Copenhagen um, on the packaging and going through a lot of different, you know, prototypes in terms of what we wanted it to look like, etc. Um, and still having it be recyclable. Now, most of recyclable material also looks very recyclable, meaning it, it has like a little bit of a sort of a brown baggy uh, feel to it, which is fine, but I was just hoping to find something that could be more luxurious. Um, and I'd always been a massive fan of, of a very talented designer called Mark Atlin. Uh, he's designed um, many sort of iconic things, but especially for me, a Comme des Garçons per perfume bottle that's like a flat silver petal um, that I thought was just one of the most amazing things. Um, and felt, you know, like if I can feel this good about holding somebody else's product, you know, I'd love to try and accomplish that, you know, for my own. So I cold called or cold emailed him and said, you know, I, I just love what you do and would, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm really challenged in finding a material that is actually recyclable, but also is luxurious. And so um, <clears throat> I kind of just packed up my mood board, you know, like I always <laughs> work in front of mood boards and flew out to LA where he is and said, you know, like this is what I'm trying to do. And, um, and then we ended up working together. So that's been fabulous. Um, he's so talented. I thought I was pretty anal when it comes to being a perfectionist, but he just, took it up a notch higher, um, but, but all for the best, truly. Um, and he called me after a couple of months and said, you know, I came across this metal. It's not recyclable, but we could turn it into a refill system. That way we can really have both. You can have the luxury aspect, but you can also have the sustainability aspect by constantly just refilling it. And so this is meant as a one-time purchase. This is meant, you know, in a sense like a piece of jewelry that you just keep replenishing. So once you're done with it, there's a little hole in the back and you can just pop it out. And then you can buy a refill that looks like this. And then you just click it in, you know, and then you just kind of keep going. Um, so just a little story on that. And I feel, you know, like, um, I don't know. I did this sort of, lit, you know, like market research before I started to try and find out how important packaging was to women. And I'd asked 200 women, how important is beauty packaging to you? And two thirds came back and said, it's really important, but kind of embarrassed about it, you know, because I think it's considered superficial. And I just totally disagree with that. I think, you know, we all surround ourselves, whether it's clothes, jewelry, I mean, why even buy a bouquet of flowers? It's a complete waste of cash, the dead in a week. But you do it because it moves you, you know, like it, it, it does something to you. So I feel that would absolutely translate into packaging as well. And, um, and also just being able to sort of take the stigma of green not being luxurious, you know, like really try and prove that that can be done. So just a little story about how the packaging came about. Um, and then I'll sort of just go into the line and then start working with it. But, you know, initially I launched with eyeshadows, lip tints, and cream blushes. Um, and then since then, obviously the line has grown, you know, into foundations. Um, we now have pencils, lipsticks. Um, we have the brushes, they're all vegan. And uh, the, the thing that we just launched this year, which is a new category, is what we call the beautiful oil. So it's like tiptoeing into skincare because obviously it's such a, an obvious thing to build next to a, a color brand, you know, because it's all about the skin. And if you can, you know, help that on the way, you'll have a better result, uh, you know, with your makeup as well. So um, I just wanted to show you like the lipsticks, for instance, you know, like are refillable as well. So you just, buy the first the case and then you can kind of just keep replenishing it and put a new color in if you wanted to. Okay, but I think I'm going to
start. Tiffany. Yes, come on up. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think, you know, for me personally, um, the skin is probably the most important piece. You know, like I feel it's, it's the canvas for makeup. It's, it's sort of where you lay the foundation for what you're going to work on. And I just love, you know, like more of a, a dewy finish, you know, kind of having a foundation that's invisible, but that still covers. And so um, I'm just going to start by applying a thin layer of the beautiful oil. So this oil, you know, like is a, again, it's a certified organic oil. It's a beautiful blend of four sort of major oils, a jojoba oil, rosehip seed oil, olive oil, and almond seed oil. And it's what you would call and consider, you know, like a dry oil. So it's not going to sit on top of the skin and not penetrate. It'll, it's going to absorb super fast. So I like to apply just, you know, like five to six sort of generous drops. And then you can let it sit, you know, three to four minutes, you know. And the oil works equally beautiful on an oilier skin and a dry skin. Um, you don't have to be nervous about using it on an oilier skin. It's not going to make it break out on the contrary. I really feel that it just helps soothing, you know, like the area that might be super irritated. You know, a lot of times with a more acne prone skin, it's deprived of oil, you know, because it'll get a moisturizer typically that uh, doesn't hold a lot of moisture. But by applying just like beautiful quality oils, uh, it absolutely will just help it calm down. So this you know, works really nice on its own, but it also happens to be the perfect primer for the foundation. You know, like a lot of the conventional brands will have what's called a primer, and the primer really is just an added layer of silicone that allows the foundation to go on like silk. You know, so um, this basically will do the same. So I'm just gonna sit and then pick a color. So, I personally love applying the foundation either just with the warmth of the fingers. I feel like when you use the warmth of the finger, the foundation is the only product in the line that has a little bit of coconut oil. And as you know with coconut oil, depending on if it sits in a cold or warm temperature, it goes liquid or it goes hard. So, as soon as you apply just the warmth of your fingers, it, it just melts into the skin. Uh, you can also use the brush. It's super easy to apply it with that. Or we just spoke of, you were using like little sponges, yes. But the key with the foundation is that it's buildable. So now that the skin is prepped with oil, you can, you know, you can leave it this thick, if you just turn around, and we could, I could, you know, cover the entire face uh, and have it be pretty heavy. I mean, this is heavy enough to go on television. This is heavy enough to, be in a theater uh, play, you know, like it, it can go on super heavy. But the good news is <laughs> you can also just blend it super sheer. So now it's as thin as a BB cream. Uh, and then so you can just go up and down in volume and in texture, so to speak. Um, I very much had my own sister in mind when we were formulating this because she has rosacea. Not so much anymore, but she did. And was just frustrated with wearing this sort of thick sort of pancake almost in order to cover it um, and now you know she'll just apply a thin layer all over her face and then just go a little heavy on the rosacea that way it's overall just still looks very natural um, so I'm just gonna apply And feel free to ask questions if you have questions along here.
But the key with the foundation is it, you know, it, the skin has to be prepped, has to be moisturized. I know you were saying you like to apply just a little bit of oil into the foundation, like on your hand, um, which you definitely can as well. Um, super light and then where you know you need just a tiny bit extra if you turn this way yeah you know like here I'll just go in with a smaller brush like around the nose as well The vegan, yeah, so they're synthetics, yeah. They really do. I mean, it's, it's always been pretty, I would say, it, it wasn't that hard, uh, you know, getting brushes that you use in a wet product, um, <clears throat> you know, for them to be synthetic, because obviously otherwise, yeah, they have to be. Um, but to find brushes that are vegan, that are done with synthetic fibers, that you use in a dry, you know, like an eyeshadow, that was just tougher, you know, like that's where you would always find the great sort of sable mink hairs, you know, but since we didn't want to do that, um, this brand, we found this, you know, manufacturer that we work with in Italy that just been able to really do some nice ones for dry product as well. So, um, they'll last forever, they truly will. I mean, I just wash them with a little bit of, you know, like a soft, shampoo or soap and leave them overnight on a paper towel. And then I'll just go a little heavier under the eye. And close your eyes, perfect. Cool. Just gonna go over here, do the other side. What was your inspiration when you created the eyeshadow, the color wise? It was, um, I would say, it was just you know from working in the field for all these years, kind of knowing which colors work well. You know, like just knowing which colors will go from light skin tones and on dark skin tones, but also going from like daytime to nighttime. Um, I think, you know, I would always go more in a direction of colors that are beautifying than more sort of like editorial crazy colors. And also just from the perspective, you know, like the minerals that you can find that are natural are typically not super bright, you know, like then you would have to add artificial color. Um, but I just like having colors that I just know will look beautiful, frankly, and that are, are easier matte, to blend. They are matte, but they, they are dimensional, they're luminous. Mm -hmm. They are. They have, you know, what I would sort of, is like a silky finish, because they're not super matte, but they're not uh, iridescent either. They just sort of have almost like a, a, a very light pearly finish, yeah. Um, but the key was, you know, like they would be easy to blend. So anyway. I guess you don't need a concealer either because you just use more of yep, the product. Yeah, exactly. This will be your concealer. I mean, I don't think we will do a specific concealer other than a corrective, you know, like one that can take care of, you know, like really dark circles or something like that. But this will function totally as your concealer. <clears throat> Yeah. 
And I just like to use it also kind of, you know, as a base on the eyelids. And I'm sure, you know, like you sometimes if you're out working, if you have a client that says, just do what you want to do, just, just use your imagination. Sometimes it's actually easier if they say, we want this, you know. And if that happened to me and I was like, hmm, I'm not sure, then I would just always, and it, help, it just helped me, you know, like just do a, a slight layer on the lips, kind of just to have a, a blank canvas that all of a sudden you can focus on uh, once you take the color out of the lips you know, what do I want to focus on? And it also just happens to be a good base, you know, for any other lip products. So this is really just super, super light, but it still looks, you know, dewy. Um, we actually are coming out with a powder in January. And that way, you know, like I feel like the line will be full circle. You can really do everything within the line. Um, it's, it's more of a super light, powder. Uh, it's, a, it's a pressed powder. It's a non-telt powder. Um, back in the days, I would always have Max blot powder. I feel like the good thing about the blot powder is you could put it on 40 times a day and you, did, you could hardly see anything's on there. So just trying to replicate that but without the synthetics in there. Um, so that's happening in January. So that's cool. Thank you. And then, you know, I don't know where you typically start. A lot of times I would go straight into a blush because I think a blush, um, I don't know, it, it just, I would just feel drawn to going down to the blush. But I think, you know, I'll start with the eyebrows um, and just use a brow brush. And the eyeshadows are really lovely to use in the brows. Um, I'm sure a lot of you prefer maybe to use pencils. Uh, I personally think pencils are a little harder to use because they have waxes in them. So if you add on a little too much, it could be really hard to correct. Uh, however, if you have, you know, like a, a dry sort of shadow, and if, even if you add a little bit too much, you know, it's very easy to correct. You just keep going until you sort of have it perfectly blended. Um, so I would always use a tone, like in one of the eyeshadows, that's about one to two shades lighter than the actual brow. Uh, just because I would like it to look like I did nothing, that it's just like the way the brow actually was. Um, and as soon as you add something that matches the actual hair, I feel like a lot of times it just becomes too much too fast but just filling it in. Yeah, it's, it's called uh, Wisdom, and it's kind of, it's the same uh, texture like the rest of them, but it's not going to look shiny uh, on the brows. And if you wanted to with the shadows, I would always, you know, do that before we had the pencils that we just launched recently. Um, but just mist, not make it wet, but just like mist a brush, dip it into the eyeshadow, and then you can use it as an eyeliner easily. It's a softer look, but it will absolutely hold up. <clears throat> then I would go in and just start, you know, like an eyeshadow. And I'm just starting with, you know, just like a, a light color, you know, to create just a base.
and then I'd go into like a medium color. We have this one that's called Wisdom, which is, you know, basically our best seller. It's a mixture, it's a taupe color. It's a mixture of gray, brown, and purple. And it just works amazing on blue-green eyes because the purple, you know, which is sort of like the opposite color will always pull out the blue and the green, but it's also really nice on brown eyes. It just gives them beautiful depth. But it's the kind of color um, that will just, you know, give depth to an eye without looking too much. Um, but you can also build it and have it be, you know, sort of like a soft base for a smoky eye, for instance. Another great uh, trick is, again, you know, to sort of just mist a brush from a distance and then dip it in. You don't have to be nervous of dipping it into the eyeshadow. And you can imagine it just sort of kind of sucks up the pigment even more so. Um, just for sort of an even deeper look, if you open your eyes. You know, I just love to kind of just fill an entire lid with this color. Um, I remember, you know, back in the days when, when taking the classes uh, at the school, they were teaching us, you know, like all the, the sort of techniques about creating corners, you know, like going into the crease and only staying out here, etc. Uh, just more old school and it was fun, but now I feel like it's just a little bit more casual kind of just uh, putting it all over the lid and creating a little bit more. It's almost like an undone look. And then I'll take the same color and then just put it underneath but with a smaller brush. This is called uh, a definition brush. You can sit so still with your eyes. Thank you. <laughs> Makes it easy. Okay, and then I'm just going to show you one of our pencils. Um, these are kind of, you know, what you would call old school pencils, you know, just wooden. Um, but the key with them is that they are, they don't pull. They're very, they're like velvet uh, once you apply them yet they're not going to smudge. So if you close your eyes, yeah. They have, you know, coconut oil in there as a moisturizing factor, so. Just kind of blend that a little bit. And 
taking a little bit of a darker eyeshadow, filling it in. Close your eyes. Yeah. So I don't know how you typically like to do. And this is sort of turning into a smoky eye. But I personally love just building it, you know, from light to dark to dark, it's even darker, you know, so you almost have like a layered thing. So it goes from light, darker, dark, instead of going from light, dark, because it always, I feel, will end up looking a little bit harsher, you know, um, like the softness is so pretty. Beautiful. Perfect. And then I'm just going to take this crease brush and kind of go in. If you look straight into the room, perfect. Just get it right into the crease and really create that depth. So the thing with, you know, like natural uh, makeup, it's really pretty much possible to do anything. Um, and being able to replace, you know, like a, a synthetic favorite. There's a couple of things you can't do. You can't do waterproof, for instance, that's impossible. That's a synthetic that you use for that. Uh, and the other one that's also challenging is SPF. Uh, but other than that, it's really what I typically will call having a great chef in the kitchen. You know, it's just trying to really work the different ingredients so that you get the same textures, and it's possible. Um, the one that we sort of are struggling a little bit with, with now and wanting to perfect is uh, something SPF. You know, like uh, titanium dioxide is a natural SPF. It is in the foundation, but it's only to around 8 to 10. So for women, you know, like they wanted to have it a little bit darker or higher. Uh, excuse me if you look up. Um, you know, I'm, we're sort of trying different things, whether it can be in a powder uh, or it could potentially be in a spray. It's a work in progress. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah, exactly that had SPF in it. No, we're working on it, but it kind of looks milky. It, it's, um, potentially, yeah. It looks straight, yes, awesome. So you'll see the mascara once I get to that. You know, like everything in the line has a shelf life of 12 months after it's opened. Um, and, you know, personally, I don't really think uh, one should have makeup open more than 12 months, you know, whether it's synthetic or whether it's natural. So you don't have to worry about shelf life. You know, for mascara, it's different. Um, it's only three months. And you'll see once I pull that out that it's small on purpose because of that, because there's only enough product in there really for three months. Um, I feel like, and maybe That's you can agree. I'm so sorry to interrupt. No. That was a brilliant <laughs> idea. Good, thank yeah. you. That's I really just feel great. like of all the things that I've seen out in the fields, you know, and you can probably agree on that, is one too many crunchy mascaras. <laughs> you know that, and with the bacteria built up, you know, because it's a wet area, 
you just want to get rid of it after three months. So, you know, by making it smaller, we kind of just take care of it for you. You'll have to get a new one. Uh, and then you can just refill that as well. And the refills, you know, come at a quite a bit lower price point. They're about uh, 30 to 40 percent, you know, lower price than the, the actual compact. Is your refill the mascara itself or with the applicator wand as well? It's everything. It's, it's a brand new mascara. Yeah. I'll show you. Um, then I'm just going to pop a little bit of this in the eye. So it's, you know, really good for sensitive eyes. You can absolutely put it on the wet part. It's not going to irritate. I hope you agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Look a little bit to the side, a little bit up, yeah. And the same thing over here, look a little bit this way, perfect. Mm -hmm. Cool. Just gonna do. Awesome. Now I'm just going to wait and do the mascara and, and go down and doing uh, a blush. I personally feel that blush is one of my favorite products. I think it's the product that you can change the look in the shortest amount of time. Anybody that walks in, amen, yes. I mean, it is so pretty, you know, like, and if even if you haven't, You've had a long night, you haven't slept all day, all night, you know, you just pop a little bit on the apples of the cheeks and instantly it sort of just lifts the entire face. So, um, I love it. And obviously it can be put, you know, more alongside the cheekbones. Um, I am just love applying it more to the apples of the cheeks. Uh, again, it's sort of from the notion of having it look like it's kind of like a, a built-in natural color, you know, like if you've been sitting out in the sun, during your lunch break with your face into the sun, when you come back, you don't have color. You, uh, sun doesn't hit a contour. It hits right on the top of the cheeks, you know, so it gives the illusion of just, you know, having come back from a vacation or something. Um, so applying it just, you know, sort of in a circular motion. And cream blushes, I know, I mean, we definitely hear that once in a while, you know, like, a lot of women are a little sort of apprehensive. They feel like, ooh, what if I put on too much? I can't move it. I think, you know, because we've all seen like an older woman that's put on, you know, a lipstick that she just didn't blend too well, you know. But it's, it is really the easiest thing to blend, you know, compared to a dry blush. If you have a dry blush on there and it's in a foundation, it's much harder to move around. Whereas a, a blush that's cream based, Say it again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can do both. I, I mean, if it's minimal, I certainly don't mind it, but not like um, for the right time and place. And and if it's for photo, I mean, it can have a huge effect. It's just you know challenging to take what's a photo look out on the street you know, and then it becomes, uh, in my opinion, a little bit too theatrical. But um, a minimalist approach to it uh, can be really nice. And for the, you know, that, I will typically use one of our bronzers or um, we have a blush in the line called Desire Glow, which is sort of like a fake tan that works really well for it. Yay. 
Then I would just, you know, put on a little highlighter. We have two highlighters. One is a bit with sort of like a silver undertone, and one is a little bit more with a golden undertone. Uh, this is the one called Radiant, which is a little bit more silver. If you turn, and I don't, I just love applying it right on the top of the cheekbone so that it just hits the light, you know, whenever you turn. If you're a little bit more daring, you can pull it a little bit more into the temples. So really here. Perfect. Thank you. Do you by any chance have eyelash curlers? Yeah, thank you. I know she does. She did. Yeah, no, I was very grateful for that. That was a nice call out from her, uh, indeed. Um, I can show you the mascara in the meantime. So the mascara is this size. Um, so obviously it's smaller, um, and you can refill it just by taking the outside casing off. So you buy a refill that comes like this, but it's actually this that you get. So you get a brand new mascara. And then this you can just throw in your recycle bin and then you can prop the pretty packaging back on, you know, because we like that. So, um, so that's how that works. And there's enough in here for three months. I'm not going to squeeze you, don't worry. Are you okay here? Mm -hmm. Good. You okay here as well? Yeah. Good. And it's more of a lengthening mascara. You know, like I think a lot of women sort of have personal relationship to a mascara. Either they want it to be really visible on the lids or they would just want it to be kind of invisible but just make the lashes look, look a little bit more um, longer, I guess. So this is definitely more of a lengthening mascara. But we, in terms of the formulation, this was one that took, you know, quite a long time. I personally felt like with a lot of the mascaras uh, that was on the market, you know, and this is when I was formulating this was probably back in 2010, um, that a lot of them would just end up down on your cheeks after like half an hour. Um, so it was just essential that it didn't move. And um, this is now really the best seller in the line. Organic. It's organic, it's certified organic, yep. Yeah. It is. It's, um, I would actually say it's, it's almost like the Maybelline, uh, the, like the pink and the green yes. back in the days, because I don't think that was really volumizing. Yeah. That was just one that really just buildable, but it created like a nice separation of the lashes. Mm -hmm. I mean, so much of lengthening versus, you know, volumizing lies in the brush. If you have bristles that sit super tight, you know, you sort of build volume at the base, uh, whereas this one, they spread out more. Um, so we're actually working on another one now that, uh, where the brush is a little bit different and more volumizing. Um, but just in terms of, you know, like, not to go into detail about like, being super anal about the packaging, but, it is a lot of times what takes time, you know, like the formulations themselves certainly do. But I always had a pet peeve. I hate it when the mascara, too much product comes out and then you have to like scoop it off and it gets all goopy. And so just having, you know, just enough come out so you don't have to do that uh, was just something that took a long time. <laughs> Right. Yes. Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. So that's 
Sometimes they don't, that's true. Yeah. Amazing. Gorgeous. Close your eyes. I'm just going to be making it a little darker. So we definitely see as well, I don't, you probably do uh, the same, that a lot of actresses just, you know, will come and really start requiring that uh, the natural makeup. You know, wearing it all day, every day, uh, it just is tiresome on the skin. And I think, you know, like one of the things that I feel would always happen when I was out in the shoot is like the models would at the end of the day say, can I just get a wipe? I just need to take it off, you know? And so one of the biggest compliments is, you know, like they don't want to take it off because really, what it is, it's skin care. So when you think of the ingredients that go in there, you know, like a beautiful organic oils, the beautiful organic butters, waxes, that a lot of it you'll, you know, you'll find in skincare products. It's exactly the same ingredients. But then as soon as you, you know, add minerals in there, you give it a color, and now it functions as makeup. But it doesn't take away from the benefits that are actually in there working on the skin while you wear it as makeup it's also a skincare product. So it just has a completely different feel in the skin. I think that's really the biggest difference uh, from synthetics you know, to, to naturals. Close your eyes, yeah. Perfect. And if you look straight again. And then I'll do the lips. I think I'm going to go a little, you know, like a little lighter on the lips. Sorry, they're really dry. Yeah, just no problem. Um, you do? Maybe yeah. just put a little bit on. No problem. Perfect. So I'm actually just going to. And then just applying it the same way, you know, like with the, uh, the lip pencils. They have a lot of moisture in them. So you can actually just use them, you know, like as a full lipstick, which is what I've been doing. Just adding, you know, like a minimal amount of lip balm, maybe once or twice a day, and then just wearing them as a full lipstick. So that will work just on its own, but I'm also just going to fill them in with a little bit of lipstick. Uh, yes, they're sort of like a semi-matte, um, like velvety, yeah. I personally feel, you know, like a lipstick is really beautiful if it's sort of velvety, not shiny. If it's shiny, then it's more of a gloss. 
uh, and, and then again, not too dry, so it looks like all tight, but sort of like that middle ground where it's almost like a velvet curtain, you know. Um, Mm -hmm. This is called Honor. This is like our nude color. What did you choose your name, the name of your mom? Um, you know, I just, that's actually one of my favorite things to do, is I keep like a book <laughs> with names. Um, and I just like, you know, to have names that are sort of a little bit girl power-ish. Um, and sometimes it just is a, it's, it's a color that sort of has to have a name that speaks to the color. So it, it depends, but um, it's a fun process. We have lip glosses coming out next year. So right now I'm working on all the names for those. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it, there's not like something set in rule, but it's just, you know, what feels right. Um, and I'm just applying a little bit of the highlighter just on top of, you know, just to give him a little bit of a pop. It's just a nice sort of way to finish it. It's not going to make the eyeshadow melt. No worries. Um, let's put a little bit here. And then, you know, like, now would be the time if you wanted to put powder, I would put powder on, not until like the very end. You could just still have, could go over the skin and just see if there's a few more places that you want to perfect it. Um, But other than that, I think we are done. Yes, so hopefully <laughs> you could be inspired by that. Um, but I think, you know, like the, the key is just hopefully that you can see that you really can have it all, you know. Um, there is no compromises with the colors. There's no compromises with the performance and um, and even, you know, like with the foundation, the oil, like let's say you have put on, you know, your face in the morning, like at 9 a.m. and then you go out at 5 a.m. and you want to refreshen it. You can absolutely put foundation right on top. And think of it again, it's skincare. It's no different than you put on your moisturizer one more time in the afternoon. It's not going to clog up the pores. It's, it's not going to do all of that. You can, you can absolutely do that. Add foundation on top even a little oil, you know. Um, I don't recommend sleeping in it, but you could, you could. So, yes, I mean, my pleasure, my pleasure. <laughs>